Jimmy, that was a cup tie full of full of twists and turns. How do you assess it out there? 120 minutes of it as well. Yeah, I think the longer and longer the tie went on, the more difficult it would be for us, you know, having not prepared, you know, for, over the last two weeks in terms of a physical capacity. Um, I thought for the first 30 minutes, I thought we were excellent. I thought we gained control. I thought we were dominant. I thought we deserved the lead. We probably, looking back at it, probably could have been two or three up and a little bit more clinical in around the final third. And then the last 15 minutes, I think we allowed them back in the game. Um, you know, we... The game become the game was the game was open on transition. Yeah, we, we thought we could and recognise that in our game planning that we could really hurt them on, on a turnover. And I think there were times whereby we were searching for that when we could have played carefully and, and have been a bit more patient and, and defended and rested on the ball. And the game for that last 15 minutes of the first half, from from my observations, become a little bit open. Um, and I just I just thought we were probably five yards off across the pitch in terms of defensively and things we spoke about half time and we had success when we had good spells of control, dominant possession. We had. Good success when we got on around them and pressed them and made it difficult and for that last 15 minutes of the first half we, we come away from script a little bit. Like you say it was that period in that first half and it could have been two but for you know, the inside of the post and off the line and just to touch on the first goal Kyle Hoodlin what, what a moment for him to, to get the goal. Yeah, just 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 saying, that. it would have been rather Rovers stuff, you know, if he'd have, if he'd have got the winning goal and you know where he's where he's come from. But um, you know, we, we signed him for a reason and a purpose because we you know we, we think we can develop him into being a you know a, a top 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 level centre forward. He's obviously got it's obviously a lot different to, to, to most. He's six foot nine, um, you know, and normally you associate players that are that tall having having loose technique and loose touch. He, he's totally the opposite. You know, he's got tight control, tight touch. Um, he's never had any any real formalised coaching in terms of being through an academy system but he's with us you know he's coming you know he's coming down and he's working with you know so hopefully some some coaches who can really develop his game and improve his game and he's, he's got a mindset to, to want to improve day in day out and we've seen that over his short his short spell with us at the football club so hopefully he can keep improving and you know and keep making a name for himself and unfortunately Joe had to come off as well on the, the half hour mark so that almost changes things a bit but you know Cal Maycock comes in and I think every player's got that position to come in and still fit for the system as well yeah, I mean the, the the change the change probably had a you know played a massive dent in in, in our performance because they're, they're totally different players. You know, Joe and Joe and Callum will play that position very 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 differently. Um, had Jamie Ward been um, you know fitter for a longer period of time and had he trained the last two weeks when we when, unfortunately we've had to we've had to isolate, he probably would have gone on because it would have been more of a, a like for like with with, with Joe and uh, we definitely miss Joe's intelligence to get between the lines and pick the ball and manage the ball up against pressure and um, you know. Not, not, not taking anything away from Callum because Callum's a, a very, very good player in his own right. But you know, looking at Callum, he's probably more suited to being one of those, one of those pivot midfield players and playing a little bit deeper. And we knew they were going to come out at us in the, the second half, and that showed with the, the two goals. But to, you know, the, the spirit to come back and get that second, and it was quite some goal as well. The run from Cameron, the, the cool finish from Jordan in there. It was. It was a great goal. And, you know, as, as I said, alluded to our game plan. We knew that there'd be space on the turnover, and we thought we could really hurt them on a counter attack. And you get that from your second goal. So you know, limited time on the grass and spent on the grass when you when you execute it you know so well you know he's pleased it pleased as a, as a, as a coach um, you know not taking anything away from the goals that we, we scored and the moments that we had I, I don't think we've conceded four you know four poorer goals all season which which really disappoints the life out of me so just to touch on the goals what what could we have done better to, to prevent them um, I think organization I think communication um, I think the ability to, to defend 1v1. Uh, the goal where Gomez makes his penetrating run as a second striker and gets it gets it gets him behind. You know, we, that's, that's something we identified as a real real strength and a, and a weapon and a, you know, a weapon for them. And we knew it was going to happen. Um, you know, we've, we've conceded two. I need to be very, very careful because I want the boys to be brave and I want them to build from the back and accept the ball under pressure. And I think we've been magnificent, you know, at times in the game. But there's also a time and a place for it. You know, you have to take what the opposition give you. And maybe the first one when it goes wide to Mitchell, maybe we should just relieve the pressure and gone a little bit, a little bit longer and gone into the second tier. Um, and maybe the same again when we've recycled through, gone through Glees to tie. You know, maybe we can just just miss it and, um, you know. If I'm if I'm being ultra critical and this might be might, might sound really harsh upon the group, we've almost conceded two academy school by S goals, you know, and uh, again that disappoints me. It's a learning curve, the learning process, I guess. And what, just touch on the extra, extra time period. What, what do you say to them when they're 
got half an hour to you know still win that cup tie and get into the third round. My 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 brain my brain moves away from a little bit away from the physicality, you know, and, and, and more more tactical and just finding ways that we can get back in the habit of exploiting it. And uh, we, we spoke about that success in that first 30 minutes when we couldn't penetrate ball side. We played an internal pass and opened the pitch up, and you know some of our some of our transfers are played from side to side in the in that first 30 minutes spell, causing real problems. And we come off it. I can't remember Jordan Cranston receiving the ball too often on a change of play in that second 45 minutes. So it was about about getting back to that, but then also you know recognising that we haven't been on the grass for two weeks and. We don't need to be sensible with our game management. We don't need to have spells when we when we don't have the ball. But as long as we rely upon our shape and our compactness to stop them playing through us and invite them on the space to go on the outside of us, we, we give ourselves a fighting chance. So, um, you know, my my mindset always always turns to to being tactical and winning the game. So just to, to conclude, if you were to give an overall reaction and to the cup tie, and I guess the cup run this season, I guess you can't complain too much. Not, not at all, not at all. No, and, you know, again, I don't want to keep harping on about it, but you know, I think we have to give the players a hell of a lot of credit. You know, they spent two weeks, 14 days, locked in the house. You know, lack of opportunity to get out on the, get, get out on the, you know, in the, in the open air, and and even do things like road runs and, and keep the fitness that way. You know, that's that's really been, been been taken away from them. And most importantly, we spoke we spoke earlier in the week about the football specific movements. You know, so we it, it was going to be a difficult task, but you know, I, I have to applaud their mentality, their character, their resilience. They're a brilliant group, and I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you now. They're a brilliant group. We've got some real, real good people in there. They're evaluating already on, on, on what we need to do better, so we don't take it into our league form on, on Tuesday evening. But massive credit, you know, to to have two weeks off, two days training. We have to be careful with the loading on them two days training, you know, and, and compete for 120 minutes. You know, I, I, bow, I bow my head to them. And like you say, it's league league action on Tuesday as well, and and Hartlepool, like they're, they're going well, and I guess not much time to recover, but the focus is, is now on that. 100%. That's, that's that's all we focus on now is, is the next game and, and rest and recovery and, and, and trying to make sure you know we're uh, in as good physical shape and state as we possibly can be for Tuesday night.